There are stories just waiting to be told about dark days in our nation's past. Many are hard to hear, but it doesn't make them any less important. The time to be silent about what these kids un underwent is past. For years, we've told you about the push by the Shawnee tribe to uncover the truth about residential religious boarding schools like the Shawnee Manual Labor Boarding School in Fairway. It's now the Shawnee Indian Mission Historic Site. In the mid 1800s, Native American children were taken from their families and sent to the school to learn Christianity and help farm. Shawnee tribe has worked for years to learn more about what happened to the children who died there. We want all the tribes whose t children attended this place to be involved in the conversation about the Shawnee Indian Manual Labor School, as well as searching for the graves of the kids that attended this place and died. The Shawnee tribe has pushed for ownership and preservation of the site in Fairway, working to use it as a reminder of the past and a monument to the Shawnee survival. A bill to give them ownership died in the Kansas State Legislature last session. So for now, talks are at a standstill between the Shawnee tribe and city and state governments. The tribe firmly believes children might be buried on the property, but historians at the site say there's no evidence of that. Sadly, the history of this school isn't necessarily unique. There are stories all across the country of Native American children ripped from their families, sent away for school, and some never return. The fight for closure and answers continues. A special very local documentary called The Lost Children of Carlisle tells the story of the Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania. The first off-reservation government-run boarding school opened in 1879 designed to assimilate Native American kids. Matt Percaro directed the documentary and joins us now. Matt, thank you for shining a light on this. What drew you to this story? Hi, Cody. Thanks for having me. What drew me to this story uh, was the fact that I didn't know about it until I was in this area and drove past this cemetery day after day and wondered what it was. The boarding school era is not one of those parts of American history that is taught frequently in uh, K through 12 schools. And it happened in the shadows. We know about the Trail of Tears. We know about Western expansion, Manifest Destiny. Uh, but we don't know too much about the boarding school era, at least in the public school system. So I wanted to uh, get these stories out there so people learn about this era that continued up until the 1960s. So only a few decades uh, from now is when the last of the Indian boarding schools closed in the U.S. And so the trauma from that experience for Native American communities is still happening today. They're still coming to grips with that. And in many cases, they're still healing from that. So this documentary, The Lost Children of Carlisle, uh, hopes to bring that to a wider audience. You know, thousands of kids, some even from the Midwest, were taken to Carlisle. Yeah. How far was the reach of this school? It was huge. And that's when you think about it, 1879, you know, think the modes of transportation that were available then in the U.S. Carlisle is in uh, south central Pennsylvania, but children from as far as Alaska uh, were shipped to Carlisle. They took a steamboat and then a train for days across the entire country to get to Carlisle. And when you think about it, they had no idea where they were. And as soon as they got to Carlisle, they had to have their hair cut. They had to pick a new name, uh, learn a new language. They were so far away from their families with no way to communicate with them. And that's where the trauma started for many of these uh, Native American uh, communities all across the country. So you have Alaska, California, Oregon, uh, the, where, where you are in the, the middle of the country, uh, the Southwest as well, and even uh, some children from the New England tribes were all sent to Carlisle over this period from 1879 to 1918. And then schools opened up all over the country after that. It's just heartbreaking. Uh, as you just heard uh, here at home, we had a similar school, a religious run school in our area decades before Carlisle opened and the Shawnee tribes working to find remains of kids who were taken there. You spoke to people in a very similar situation. This has to be emotional, just heart wrenching, important work for them. It is, and it's been going on for some time. Uh, the Carlisle Indian School has about 200 children uh, who were buried in the cemetery that is still existing on the site, but there are a little more than a dozen of the headstones that don't have any child's name. Instead, they say unknown. And so after passing by that cemetery a lot, I, I wondered who those children are. And so The Lost Children of Carlisle, this documentary, uh, aims to bring their names to light. So we did a lot of research, and there's some new information revealed in here about who those children may be from historians who have studied this and from their family members from Alaska, South Dakota, which we visited, who believe that their loved ones, they're one of the unknowns, and they have been working for decades to, to make sure that their names are out there so that maybe one day their remains will be able to be repatriated and brought back to their ancestral land for a proper burial there. 
a matter of closure and a matter of addressing a, a painful time in our nation's history. Matt Barcaro, thank you so much again for, for shining a light on this. Right. The Lost Children of Carlisle airs on Very Local. It's now streaming. It's free through your smartphone, Amazon Fire TV, or Roku devices.